Uh, I'm the marketing director here at P360. Thank you all for joining us this morning for our masterclass, Overcoming Pain Points in HCP Communication. Uh, I want to take this time to uh, introduce our, um, our presenters for this morning. Uh, first, we have uh, Dr. Mayer, um, who is actually a, hold on, this is not, there we go, Dr. Uh, Mandira Mera, who's actually um, a physician and medical journalist, and I will let you introduce yourself, Dr. Mayer. Good morning. Thank you so much for the introduction and for having me today. Uh, that's right. My name is Dr. Mandira Mera, and I'm so happy to be talking about this important topic about communication, HCP, how we can optimize it, make it more efficient. Uh, my background, of course, is I am double board certified both in interventional spine and pain as well as neurology. And I have some certifications in wellness as well, but I feel incredibly passionate about really being able to optimize healthcare. We have so many great aspects to healthcare, and we have incredible doctors like myself. Um, but really, if we're not working in a good ecosystem and in an optimized environment, uh, a lot of those benefits are lost. So thank you so much for having me. This is going to be a great discussion. Great. Thank you for that, Dr. Mara. Um, we also have with us today Kimberly Gregorio. She goes by KG. She's our Vice President of Business Development and Operations here at P360. Uh, KG? Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, excited to talk to you today. Um, excited to talk with Dr. Mayer about these important topics as well. Uh, I want to give you a quick backstory on myself and how I'm involved. Um, I started my journey within the healthcare as a pharma rep in New York City. Um, and then I went into consulting for the pharmaceutical industry and life sciences industry. Um, and then I moved to Florida because I needed sunshine in my life. And I did some process improvements for a few years before jumping back in um, to pharmaceuticals and working to partner with HCPs and the pharma companies um, with P360. So excited for the conversation today. Excellent. And then I will just go ahead and jump into our first pain point, which is emails go going directly into spam. All right. So if I may comment on this a little bit, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are used to hearing uh, the same narrative from physicians and other HCPs, which is, you know what, we're bombarded, we're busy. Uh, but maybe the information you're trying to get to us and maybe the information we really need it's just not getting to us or it's not getting to us in an effective way. And so the question ends up being, what can we do about that? And I know I'm not the solutions person here. I'm more the person that's going to tell you, I guess, the challenges that we face. So, you know, I can tell you the mailbox becomes full. You can imagine that of all the different uh, companies, pharma, rep, device people that are trying to get a hold of me, if I'm getting one to two to three emails a day, you can imagine how much of that never gets read or gets filtered into spam or uh, doesn't get communicated in an effective way. Uh, the point here is that I need that information. As a physician, I need to stay up to date on the latest cutting edge technologies, medications, devices available to provide the best care. But how do we get that to me in an effective and an efficient manner and also in a manner that it seems less like a marketing tool but more like hey here's a solution to a problem so you have to remember that as a physician it may seem like we sit in front of our computers all day clicking little boxes but the reality is we're on the move we're seeing patients we're prioritizing things we're in procedure rooms and so we're not always sitting in front of a computer or sitting in front of our email accessing this thing the worst part is is that you know we live in a world, whether it's Amazon, Uber, Instacart, whatever, it's 2022, but medicine is stuck in, God, maybe the 1990s, sometimes the 2000s. I mean, I still receive faxes. Faxes should be a thing of the past. I still receive physical copies of brochures and pamphlets and forms that need to be filled out and ways to get patients things like you know, reps stop by with information that needs to physically then be given to patients and so on and so forth. So the question is, what are some real world solutions that we can come up with that I can still get that needed information, not be oversaturated, not have 
too many mechanisms by which I obtain this and maybe technologically bring us into 2022 uh, so that we're making this optimized and efficient for everybody. Because if it's optimized for me, I promise you we're optimizing patient care at the end of the day as well. Um, we know that there's immense pressure to always be providing information, but it needs to be provided in a way that's easy to access and effective. Dr. Mara, you hit exactly what I was thinking right on the head there. Um, thank you. I mean, she's right. This problem is real. Um, I liked your analogies kind of stuck in the 90s and 2000s, right? I mean, it is. Who who sends faxes? Who who sends hard copies to be delivered places? But the pharma industry, that's what they're doing. And we, we need to move forward. We need to move with the times. Um, and I've spent a lot of time thinking about it, right? As a professional, um, I've spent a lot of time in process improvement. Um, I've been a rep, so I'm trying to merge all of this together to think about how do we solve these problems that Dr. Mara just outlined. Um, you know, it's taking pharma almost four to six weeks to get one approved email out. And then for Dr. Mara to say she barely has time to read it, that's, that's hard to hear as a pharma marketing person, right? That's hard for me to hear, like, well, how do I get the right information out there? Um, and so I think there just needs to be a change overall. Um, it's understandable that the sales leaders insist on making those face-to-face -face connections and the only way of interacting with HCPs. But what else is there? What else can we do? Um, and by being an advocate to the physician and to the healthcare provider on their time and helping them get the information they need quickly really will build that credibility as a rep to that HCP. Um, and kind of help that oh, that relationship over time. While I was thinking about some of these pain points, there was this one fact that I read that really kind of sparked my wheels turning, so to speak. And it was that there is a 750% higher response rate from text messaging to um, traditional email. Like, that's mind blowing to me. And you can probably see on the screen here that even Gartner is saying that most customer service organizations might abandon native mobile apps in favor of, um, you know, test messaging. So that's where I started thinking of ways that pharmaceutical companies can come to current times in, front, in forms of engagement. Um, I've spoken to HCPs like Dr. Mara and I found out the pain points that she just described. So what are we trying to say? HCPs really want their information now. Um, they don't have time to dig through their emails or to find out when the rep comes back. They need that right away. Apps really aren't the answer because there's too much to download. There's too much to log in. Then you got to update the app. Um, texting is the way most communication is happening these days. You probably have noticed a turn on that from your retailers to your Instacart people. Um, but it's always been taboo in pharma. And why? Why has it been taboo, right? If I remember back to my rep days, we couldn't talk about product because it wasn't approved. We couldn't text that in. We could only talk about what time we would be there if we were sending a text. But there's ways that you can get messaging through that's approved. And, you know, we might walk through that a little bit in a little bit. But making this channel work for your organization is super important because that's with the doctor that's right on them. It's now. Um, you know, as I mentioned, P360 actually worked on this, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, the other new thing is QR codes. You see them everywhere. You can't go to a restaurant and order off a menu without scanning a QR code. You can't pay for some things without using a QR code. So why can't we make that work for pharma to physician engagements? Think about it. Creating a piece of collateral that has a QR code on it. Maybe it gets taped in the sample closet. An HCP can come up, it can scan it, they can go straight to a menu that says either I need a copay card or I need um, a rep visit or I need samples, you know, whatever you may want to see in that. But then the HCP is getting serviced right then, right? So if they just need a copay card, they can push one or two or whatever number it is on the menu and boom, they have that copay card right in front of them. Or if they need a dosing information, boom, they have that right in front of them. All of that is 
giving them what they need when they need it. Um, so QR codes might be another way to explore in this new realm of physician engagement. The other piece that the QR code offers is other members of this office staff can help, right? Office staff is often overlooked in pharma to physician engagement. And I'm sure Dr. Mara can attest to this. Mm -hmm. Her staff spends the majority of the time with the patient because the doctors are stretched so thin. So getting the staff up to speed on what's happening with the product is equally as important as getting the physician up to speed. So having the ability for the staff to engage is super important. Yes, I mean, I would love to echo that uh, that sentiment and something I think we overlook often. You know, we think yeah. about, OK, well, how do we get in the doctor's ear? How do we get in front of the doctor? But to be honest, sometimes that MA, that nurse that I have, they're going to be that first line of defense. They're taking that patient call. They're rooming the patient. And then it ends up becoming this unnecessary ping pong effect. You know, now we've gone from the patient need to the nurse, to the MA, back to Dr. Mara, back to the MA, versus if my staff just had that information, had that QR code, had access to what they needed, we could eliminate three, four of those ping pongs and get the patient what they needed much faster. Exactly, right? The idea is to make the HCP's life easy. Get the information when and where they need it. Um, you can't always just force technology on healthcare providers or their staff. So it has to adapt. It must work in their way of life. Um, one, one thing we did recently was a panel interview with two oncology nurses. Um, one of their chief complaints was no structure in their day. You're getting pulled here, you're getting pulled there. We can help them as, as the pharmaceutical industry, you can come out and help them be that advocate for their time, build that relationship with the HCPs. I, I love that you mentioned the word relationship, uh, because at the end of the day, it's so easy to think of an HCP as an HCP that you put on a graph or a physician that you put on a, uh, you know, a bullet point for some data. But at the end of the day, I'm human, you're human, and we want those relationships. Uh, to be honest, if I have two products out there and they work very similar and they have similar efficacy safety profiles, I'm going to go with the one where the rep is more responsive. I can depend on, the patients can depend on. And that goes to show you how powerful that relationship really can be. Exactly, exactly. Dr. Mara, do you want to talk about in-person meetings and how that's working for you? <laughs> yes, uh, now this has been a dramatic shift in the past two, two and a half years, obviously with the immense pressure of the uh, tectonic plates of COVID, uh, just really stretching, of course, not just H HCPs, but all healthcare systems in general. Uh, and so, of course, that's also caused some needed forced technological changes, which is great. So while my in-person time has become more limited, uh, both for reps, for patients, for pharma, uh, it's also become limited, but has forced a technological change. It has forced some uh, telemedicine or virtual medicine and all these rules and regulations, not just from pharma, but insurance companies and from physicians that there's so much red tape, we can't make virtual medicine happen. It all went out the window because we had a need and it sort of got fixed during COVID. At right. the same time, it posed new problems. It posed physical occupancy issues. It caused issues with how do we communicate now with pharma? How do we communicate with our device and our um, reps? Because if we're not meeting in person as much or we're restricting that, how do we do that? Now I'm gonna take 30 seconds to share a story with you that happened to me about six months ago. Uh, a very personable but aggressive rep was unable to connect with me for a variety of reasons. I had cases in the OR, we had other things happening in the office, very sick patients, bombarded, so on and so forth. This rep very intelligently, if I may say so, made an appointment under one of my patient appointments. Now, oh. while that was super smart and super aggressive, it was very unappreciated because that's not what a patient appointment is for. And so you can imagine how livid I was when I came to my 2.30 appointment and I said, how did my staff let this happen? And when I spoke with a rep, she said, hey, but you've got six patients on schedule for the OR next week. I haven't been able to connect with you. You know, we have to make this happen. So the point of this 30 second story is we have to be able to do this in an effective way without taking up my time or a patient spot. At the same time, as we just talked about, the staff has to be included. 
So how do we do this without ping ponging back and forward? Uh, back and forth. How do we do this in a way that we're still engaging physicians, we're creating relationships, and even if in-person meetings aren't happening, is it a QR code? Is it a FaceTime? Is it a Zoom call? You know, there's different creative mechanisms out there. And I will tell you the shocking part here is we have the technology available. This is not like we're sitting here today saying, wow, how do we recreate the wheel? If we can do this for our retail, if we can do this for other industries, why is it that we're kind of stuck in the dark ages and we refuse to move forward? You know, this is a change that we should be demanding. We should be making the conversation about optimizing communication, not just, hey, you know, we're producing a lot of content. You know, I've talked to a number of pharmaceutical companies over the past two years who are producing content. They say, hey, Dr. Mara, help us produce content. And at the end of the day, we're seeing it's not, it's barely nudging the engagement, the physician engagement, why is that? So maybe yeah. it's not the qu quantity of content, it's the quality of how we're delivering it. So what is our solution to this? Do we text, do we call? Um, how do we incorporate this into the typical day of someone like myself? Right, and, and like you said, in-person in meetings are extremely difficult, right? They were probably extremely difficult before the pandemic, right? Your, your day is very busy. Now you've layered in this great new technology that was so desperately needed in healthcare of the Zoom meetings and the virtual doctor's appointments and the virtual visits. But now you're facing, you're on Zoom a lot too, and you're having to log into a separate platform and things. Um, it's really like, why not have HCPs notify a rep when they're ready via text, via QR code, the, the rep can send them an instant video link of a schedule link to schedule a meeting on their time. So you can take a look at your schedule and say, I want to meet with the rep on this day. This is the day I'm going to block out to meet with rep. I'm going to say KG, right? And that way it's when you're available, not that rep sneaking in via a patient appointment when you're not available for that kind of mindset. You're not open to hearing at that point. You're in patient mode. Um, so, you know, taking that time. The, the point is direct, you know, having that direct communication, that direct relationship, the flexibility to flex the relationship to the doctor's needs at that time is super, super important. Um, you know, if you did schedule a video call, making it as simple as a video link going out there where they're not logging into a new platform, not having to get an app. They just click the link and boom, they're in a in a video call. Um, you know, it's it can be secure. The HCP and the rep can have the right conversations. I mean, you, you mentioned a typical day, you're visiting the hospital, attending patients, you're, you're getting called for an emergency, you're on top of all the documentation, you're trying to learn and keep up with the latest trends in your industry. That's a lot. That's a lot. And so by building, you know, I, I keep harping on this relationship, but by building that relationship in a professional manner really can say, you can say, you know, I could say, hey, Dr. Mara, you know, I know you're really stressed and you're trying to keep up with this. I've got this cute card that tells you the five main facts you need to know about the new indication for our product. I'm going to text that over to you at your will when you have time. Take a look at it. Text me back. See if you have any questions. You know, something simple like that, that would just open up that trust factor, that compassion, that empathy that humans have with one another, instead of, like you said, being a number on a chart, being a, you know, everybody's human here. You were making one point that really jumped out at me. Um, and the content sometimes is not getting to you that you need. Um, but one thing that we did see through the pandemic is some of the content that pharma was producing was more pointed because they were on, they understood the shorter time frame, they understood the shorter attention span that we had, so they needed to get more pointed information out there. One of the quotes, and I'm going to read this, um, it said 83% of HCPs say the content they're getting from pharma companies is more relevant now than it was before the pandemic. Is that something that you see or are you not seeing, Dr. Mara? I'm beginning to see that shift, which is refreshing and definitely, like I said, optimizes my day. I think, you know, big pharma and pharma is finally recognizing that, like we said, it's not necessarily the quantity of that content, 
but high quality and really effective communication. And so I love that we're starting to switch to some of those optimized bullet points. Here's how it can help your patient population, not just, you know, here's a slide deck of 40 slides and come to a dinner and sit there for three hours because honestly, who's got that time now? So I <laughs> love that some of that is, is being shifted and we're not yeah. having that same um, requirement that the only way to learn about this is a three hour dinner or traveling across the country to hear about it for the first time. Right, and I think what we're hearing Dr. Mara say, and what I'm trying to explain is the more pointed your your communication is and the more engaged you are with the physician and caring about what their particular needs are, because no two practice run the same. So one practice might need it this way, one practice might need it another way. It's building that ease of engagement between the two parties um, that's super important. Now for the now for the um the the big thing, right? It's we always hide behind this word of compliance and how do we remain compliant and sharing in these new technologies, right? You alluded to we finally can do all these video calls, whereas before it was no, 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 no. So talk to us a little bit about that. You know, compliance is like you said, that word not only do we hide behind, but some of us give up. You know, we're not, I'm not a lawyer by profession. I don't pretend to understand it, but I do understand that privacy, HIPAA, I understand that, you know, I can't communicate the same way uh, about my groceries, the, the way that I would communicate about a patient's personal, intimate, detailed information, because there may be security breaches. I mean, it may not be HIPAA compliant. Uh, right. That being said, what we're talking about today is how do you optimize my day? How do you communicate with me effectively? How do we eliminate the ping pong effect? And why is all of this important? Because at the end of the day, that's how I can treat patients better and get them the best product or get them the best pharma or get them the best treatment. Now, you said something super interesting to me. Not It's not a one size fits all. Just because Dr. Mara's office and her life works a certain way doesn't mean um, I'll give you an example. I come from a family of doctors. So Dr. Mara Sr., my dad, who grew up in a different era, he's not going to communicate the same way. And then I have a baby brother that's a neurosurgeon. I promise you his day is structured very, very differently than mine. And so the way he communicates with pharma, with reps, with information and education is also going to be different. So the idea of having flexibility and understanding it's not a one size fit all uh, you know, a big corporate meeting may say, this is how we're going to deliver the information and this is our plan, but that may not work on a human level or on a day-to-day -day level. Now, over the past two years, the landscape has shifted a lot. We are seeing more rapid adjustment, which is great, but there's still so much better that we can do. You know, at the end of the day, I would love to ask my pharma, how many dollars are you spending per marketing to get to your physician and how much engagement are you getting out of that? Is that number increasing or decreasing? Um, and this is something I'm not privy to, but I'm sure we can shed some light on. You know, there is a such thing as promotion fatigue. You know, we all talk about Zoom fatigue. We just, we don't wanna look at a computer screen anymore, but sometimes at the end of the day, it's like, I've been given so much product material. I just wanna know how can I treat my patient better? What relationship will I have, will my staff have with the pharma? How can we engage in an effective way? Um, so these are really the important things and having that flexibility is important. Now we have seen tons of apps, tons of modules, tons of websites. You can log in, enter your username, enter your password. Let's stick to the KISS method, K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. Just <laughs> the more simple you can make it, the more likely I am to engage with you and that an HCP is likely to engage with you because our life is complicated as is. We're dealing with treatments and safety efficacy and tons of new data and prior authorization and insurance and so on and so forth. So if something can be presented to me that makes my life more simple, more streamlined, more effective, bring it on. Tell me more about that and then help me with that compliance issue. I don't want to break any laws. I don't want to do a security breach, but tell me how we can do that in a compliant fashion. Absolutely. And you're absolutely right. No two practices are the same. I, I experienced that when I was a rep. And it's time that farmers started to understand, like you said, you can't sit and say everybody should do it this way because it's not the same. It's definitely not the same across the board. And compliance is a huge part 
of healthcare and of pharma. Um, and when you're thinking of some of these ideas that you've heard today, always remember to gain partnership with your compliance team because a partnership with compliance makes it so much easier to evolve together because you hate to get all the way down that evolution path in your thinking and then say, oh no, I didn't bring compliance with me. Now I've got to go back and drag them down the same path that I've been. So keep them in mind. As I was thinking of some of these ideas, I did that exact thing because I remember how important compliance was. So I engaged the top lawyers in this space. I engaged some contacts that were compliance officers for some top pharmaceutical companies. And I just bounced ideas off of them. And I said, how do we make this compliant? How do we bring you along in this evolution? Um, and, and so what I learned, right, particularly around texting, if we can lock it down and template the text so that it's bite-sized information, but approved, it's compliant just as much as an email is compliant. Um, so there's, you know, you have to think about that information. One of the good things is with the texting in, um, you know, the solution that we developed, you can track all those clicks and those opens. Um, the other thing was QR codes. This is completely new in pharmaceutical. Pull marketing is not something that has happened in the pharmaceutical landscape, but it makes sense because how do we make it easy for the doctor? The doctor's not gonna wanna have to wait for my next visit in three weeks. They're gonna want me to come when they're available or they're gonna wanna ask me a question when they want to. So that's where the QR code is really important. And if the automated response is sending information, just as long as that goes through the internal compliance, it's good. Um, instant videos, right? Everybody's doing videos through Zoom, through FaceTime, any different way. So if you use a different instant video platform, as long as it's meeting all standard guidelines for instant video, that still remains compliant as well, right? So moving forward with the HTTP engagement and bringing it up to speed, you have to bring compliance with you, bring them to the meetings, bring them to the conversation. You'd be surprised how many departments are actually excited to move forward and move past some of the old manual grunt work that we've been facing in pharmaceutical um, engagement with HCPs. So there's been a lot that we kind of went over. I think that was a lot pretty fast. I don't know if you want to kind of give your point, Dr. Mara. Yes, I think, you know, what we covered today is of utmost importance because what we're touching upon is how do we get HCP engagement to occur in an effective, in an optimized manner, in a way that then ultimately trickles down and translates to better patient care. Uh, now, from the pharma standpoint, from marketing to a physician, which is really what we're talking about. It sounds funny to say that, but how do you market to a physician? We've yeah. discussed that it's not a one size fits all. We've discussed that promotion fatigue can occur. And we've discussed that there are effective ways to communicate. Uh, KG covered some really great solutions uh, practical solutions. How do we incorporate this technology using all this amazing technology, whether it's texting or linking or QR codes, and those bite-sized informations can be great ways to get through to your HCP. Now, at the end of the day, as a physician, I want uh, effective data. Tell me the mechanism of action. Tell me how this is a solution to a problem for my patient. Tell me, will this be covered by insurance or what the difficulty will be, or are you going to drop off coupon codes in a month? Now, I will remind you, as the landscape is shifting, right, we're all dealing with this pandemic and COVID, and even when COVID disappears or becomes endemic, the shift has already occurred in medicine. Now, 20 to 70% of medicine is being done virtually. How do I get my virtual patient? I just saw that coupon code that the rep dropped by last week. I'm not going to mail it to them. I can't fax it to them. And to KG's point, this is where that QR code that I could forward to the patient via email, via EMR, via, you know, whatever virtual me mechanism is happening. Now it's 30 to 70% because it de depends on your profession. Are you procedure based? Are you primary care? Whatever. The point is we have to be able to update this stuff technologically to really be able to optimize the way we're caring for patients. And if we can do that, if we can come together and include physicians as part of the conversation, I think tomorrow just continues to look brighter. Exactly. Um, I mean, just to your point, right? We need to look at HCP engagement as a whole. 
How is that customer experience coming in? Um, providing the best customer experience. Learn from the data, make information delivery intelligent, right? We don't want to continue to hand bad stuff out. We want to make sure we're delivering what you need in your practice. And just fostering that relationship, fostering that one-on-one -on -one communication, trusted relationship, so that if I were the pharmaceutical rep and Dr. Mara was thinking, I need to know this, who am I going to trust? Then they would think to call me instead of maybe my competing product. I want to leave you with some of these stats that are on the screen before we go to Q&A, um, because they're pretty interesting and pretty eye-opening. Um, you know, text messages have an average open rate of 98% compared to email at 20%. As a marketer, well, that tells me we need to start exploring a new channel. 80% um, of emails go unread, while 60% of people read their texts within five minutes. That's true. I would say that's true just based off of my personal non-scientific experience of I have 2,000 unread emails in my inbox and no unread texts. So, you know, <laughs> I think that that's very true. That's my personal inbox. My, um, But like 82% of HCP are on their mobile and they prefer mobile communication. And then 98% of businesses stated that video conferencing helps with relationship building inside and outside the company. So with that, I thank you for listening and I think I'll turn it over to Kate for some questions and answers. Great, we actually, thank you for, for that back and forth, Dr. Mara and KG, very informative. Um, we have a couple of questions in the chat, um, specifically, in the first pain point we were discussing about emails going to spam, and you both had mentioned about um, things that you wanted to see and information that you wanted right now, especially uh, Dr. Mara. Uh, the question is, what is the priority list of info that HCPs want to see? So if you had to guess what type of information, that I think that's what they're looking for. Yes, that that's a great question. And that I think probably summarizes everything we discussed today it would be solution or problem-based. In other words, if you're promoting a hypertension drug, I want to know in your hypertensive drug, drug A, why is it different? What is the mechanism of action? What is the safety profile? What is the benefit? Why should I be using this? And how does this effectively make my patient's life better, right? So I look at everything as patient is coming to me most likely because they have a problem, sometimes preventatively, but most likely because they have a problem, an ailment, a hypertension, a pain, and they're looking to me for a solution. So ultimately, if I can be provided some kind of communication, email, text, QR code that says, hey, there's a new treatment on the market, and here's why this new treatment is better. We know it's better because it has a better safety profile, because it's more efficacious, uh, because of X, Y, Z. So that's the high yield information that I want to be fed in, a, in the most effective manner. Uh, and if that can be done, then I'm absolutely going to use that product on my patient and say, here's a treatment modality that is a solution to your problem. Yeah, excellent. I think Thank you. Took it away. <laughs> Uh, the next two questions actually are related to each other, so I'll um, let you guys talk through them. Um, the first one is texting presumes that the HCP will provide their cell phone number, which most won't. How can one overcome this issue? And the next question, which is semi-related, um, which is uh, about reps. Are they feeling replaced by digital tools? And is it is this a barrier to implement this new HCP communication approach? I think so, those are both million dollar questions. Uh, and I think KG can also speak from personal experience. I think that from a rep perspective, one of the biggest frustrations after having relationships with reps now for almost 15, 20 years is the wasted time, whether it be the wasted time on the road, they would drive to see a physician, a surgeon, a primary care, Dr. Mara Sr., Jr., whoever you're driving to see, and then you don't end up seeing them. And out of desperation, you're now taking up a patient slot, right? So that fatigue on their part, the frustration, the inefficiencies in their day. So I think if we present it as more of a solution, that here, now you can communicate without spending X amount of time on the road and without 
an ineffective visit and maybe you dropped off lunch, but you never even saw the physician, if we can make it solution-based and say, here, now you're communicating in a way technologically that actually instead of seeing two doctors today, you can see six, whether it be Zoom, whether it be text, whether it be a, a FaceTime. Now, the, sec the first part of your question was, what if a physician will not share their cell phone? I will tell you the gatekeepers to the physician's day, even if my cell phone is not with me, is my MA, is my front desk staff, is my nurse. And if you can get through to them in an effective manner, then I promise more than likely I'm going to hear that information and be able to implement it. So I would say in some of those stubborn cases, if a physician says, no, my cell phone's not out for grabs, call the office, you know, make friends, make those relationships with the rest of the physician staff because they are the gatekeepers. They will tell you when to stop by with that coffee, when to stop by with the QR code, how to effectively communicate with them. And it's not a one size fit all. Um, and KG, chime in and tell me what I'm missing here. No, you're absolutely 100% correct, right? And so when we developed Zing Engagement Suite, which is the product that P360 offers to help this, we really took that into consideration, right? Because you want to be able to text the front, the front office. You want to be able to text your MA. You want to be able to text your PA, whomever it is. Um, you want to be able to communicate with everybody equally. Um, that barrier of getting the physician's phone number is probably less than you would assume. Um, I know as a rep, I had probably 80% of my physician's cell phone numbers to text and say, hey, is this a good time? Because I was allowed to do logis logistical texting. So can I stop by now? Is this a bad time? Because I then was respectful of their time in trying to foster that relationship. So you'd be surprised. And the, the intent of this is to augment that relationship that's already there, right? So to augment that personal relationship by giving them the factual stuff they need aside from I'll stop by tomorrow or do you want coffee or do you want lunch, right? So to build that relationship a little bit further. Um, but to Dr. Mara's point, if they're not going to give you their personal cell phone number, I'm sure somebody in the office is going to be needing that information and they're going to take it and take the information and it will get passed on. There is nothing that happens in at least in any of the physicians that I called on. There's nothing that no conversation that was had with anybody in the office that didn't get back to the doctor. Everybody talks about what happened that day. They talk about that rep KG that came in and what she said. And, you know, so it will get back to the physician. Excellent. And the last, there's two questions here that are more um, more opinion based, but uh, so I'll ask them together again, which is uh, are short videos still a way instead of text or a combination of both of both? So like brand promotion videos asking if what your opinion is on those and then also um, specifically as an HCP, would a podcast be of interest? So just trying to get feedback on those, please. Yeah, and I think both questions are very uh, intertwined. Um, so we've seen the number of podcasts, whether it be from the American Health Association, Heart Association, JAMA, um, individual companies, individual pharma. Podcasts are an incredible way and resource that a physician can say on his or her time or an HCP can say, you know what, I can log in and still get educated and still gain that information. So I think using that technology through podcasts, through video, through YouTube, you know, whatever it is, that is something to continue to take advantage of. And so if a pharma or a device rep says, hey, we have a weekly podcast or a monthly podcast that's uh, almost like discussing uh, cases. You know, we go through cases, we talk about problems and solutions and speak with real physicians about how they, um, solve those problems and how the medication or the device may have helped, then you better believe I'm tuning in because I want to hear that. That is an incredible resource and value. Now, in terms of snippet videos and promotional things, uh, again, if it's providing me some solution-based value and it comes off less like a marketing tool and more like a solution, then I'm more inclined to click it, watch it, be tuned in. You know, I'll tell my, my nurse, my staff, my MA, let, we have to tune in because when patient X comes in next week, we want to have our ducks in a row. You know, we want everybody to be aware of how to treat this patient with the most cutting edge technologies or therapies available. So I think both have their utility. And, that, and that's why we've seen the podcast world explode. That's why we've seen the YouTube world explode, even within healthcare. 
you know, one of the first things patients do, you have to remember before they come to see me, they have already Googled their symptom. They have already looked up um, a video. They've looked up the Mayo Clinic, Hopkins, Dr. Mara, I have my own podcast and I'm not here to promote that, but they've already Googled it and looked it up and they already have their own opinion about what's going on. And so I, as the physician, have to be able to one up you. I have to be able to do a little bit better and say, hey, you may have watched that YouTube video from Hopkins that's 10 years old, but I've got five new treatment modalities for you that wasn't on that video because I just got it in a QR code text this morning. So that's what I should be as a physician, not just antiquated data from 10 years ago on YouTube, but hey, I can provide you cutting edge technology that my friendly rep provided me with this morning. And I'm going to pull on that just a little bit. That's exactly right. The podcasts are super important, but the videos have I've seen start to turn. And what I see is the HCPs enjoy getting the video that in a quick one minute video walks the patient through how to use the product or how to administer the product. Um, and that the doctor can say, this is a very good educational video that when I'm talking to a patient about starting a new product would be great to send them to watch. You know, things like that is where it really is starting to help physicians um, use it with their patients. I mean, let's be honest, KG, patients sit in my waiting room, sometimes five minutes, sometimes 10, occasionally longer, but hopefully not. But what are they doing, really? They're going through their own grocery list, they're on Instagram, they're on Facebook, they're looking up today's news. But what we should be sharing with them if we're really trying to optimize their visit is maybe a video about their condition. And I'll yeah. tell you one physician that I have seen do this very well, for example, is a local ophthalmology physician in the waiting room. They have iPads, they have devices, they have videos playing about different ophthalmologic, you know, glaucoma, different conditions, but patients are engaged in that because they're there for a problem and they're looking for a solution. That way, when they walk into my office and I say, hey, it's time for your visit, they're already armed with, hey, I watched that video out front. Tell me what the lens is doing. So why aren't we doing that for our respective specialties and our respective fields? Absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, that concludes our Q&A section. If there are any other questions, I encourage anyone who was able to attend to go ahead and put them in the chat and we can always answer them after the fact. Um, thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Mara, and for KG. This has been very informative, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Anupam and P360. Uh, this is always incredible and a very important conversation, allowing us to hopefully move forward uh, in a positive direction. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.